what's going on fellow summers dcs world uh this video is exactly what the title suggests this is for those quest 2 owners quest 2 players who have been struggling to get their quest 2 to function well enough to be able to not only play dcs but to be good enough to be able to identify a bogey and shoot it down before it shoots you down like myself over a year ago first tried D dcs and vr and ever since then i just cannot go back to a flat screen so but unfortunately could never get my oculus quest 2 dialed in enough to be able to play it so like a lot of players put it on the shelf and went and played other games call of duty or hell let loose or something and it wasn't until i heard about open xr that i decided to let me try it again i've upgraded my computer since then and go from there and a little heads up even after i upgraded from a 5500 to my current gpu 6700 xt and even the uh, cpu with the old settings i still couldn't get the quest 2 to work so with that being said let's jump right into it try to make this pretty quick uh, so the first things first is my system pull this over here basically my system the cpu is a let's go cpu first C cpu is a amd 9 5900 and i'm using the process lasso i'm going to leave uh, links to all the software that i use in in the uh, description below so i'm using a process lasso to dedicate two cores for dcs on my cpu now they say if you have a uh a, a, a four cores or less you shouldn't do that but if you have more than four cores uh it, they recommend it to help with the uh processing speed wise uh, something about uh especially in vr single core doesn't multi-core well or something like that so i'm not a computer i'm not uh i guess a computer savvy i don't know exactly all the details just know if it works if it doesn't work so every little bit helps so and my GPU, Radeon 6700 XT, upgraded from the 5500, and my motherboard is an MSI 50 or 550 Mordor. So I got MSI GPU and MSI a graphic or motherboard. Sorry, my cat just jumped behind my computer, scared me. We're gonna pull out some <laughs> cords. Uh, so that's my system. Now the software that I use, uh, of course. Number one software, OpenXR Toolkit. For me, this is a must software. The problem with it, once the first time I tried to use the software, I could never get the menu to open up. So the software, even though it was open, really wasn't doing anything. Everything was turned off. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little trick that I found reading in a forum that turned it on it was like it was so easy i couldn't believe it doesn't make any sense how it works so i'm gonna leave the descriptions descriptions below and then with the open with the open xr toolkit have the uh open composite runtime of course oculus is native open xr so you don't really have to pull over any more files into your oculus files for open xr it's already done for you so with open open composite basically you download this and you click this button it says switch to open composite what it's going to do is going to switch it over so open xr works now the other software that is a must have at least in my opinion a lot of uh, the opinion of a lot of people i talk to is this is where you at right here the uh dcs update launcher why is this a must have when you're tinkering with graphics settings it is a pain to put your vr settings on take them off and all this stuff so if you click vr off it's going to open dc uh, dcs up on your desktop you don't have to worry about vr so you can go in and mess with your settings and then when you've done that in process and you click your vr so now let's go over to my settings and i'll show you how to activate vr in the open xr toolkit my settings leave this up for a while so you can copy them if you want textures and train high civilian traffic's low 
water and visibility range in other words I'm, i spend most of my time up in the air if i'm too close to the ground and probably i've already screwed up i need to worry about what's chasing me so the fps is going to be key on that so so the shadow is medium even my cockpit and stuff is down 512 the resolution this is for your uh your desktop screen size if you're in vr no need for your gpu to be chewing up a bunch of data space trying to render your image on your screen that you're not watching so now all your post-processing stuff like that your msaas and ssaas what it does it helps with the shimmering if you can deal with the edges of the wings and not being perfectly just a little bit of shimmering i recommend i recommend keeping all this stuff off especially this one here this bad boy chews up frames per second and fps is pretty much what i was looking for uh if i'm looking at the ground i want it to be smooth i don't want that, that stutter i guess and give make it as make it seem as real as possible and everything else turned off except for clouds is high then over here clutter clutter grass if i like I said if i'm on the ground i've already screwed up i don't really need i'm not looking to mow grass so i don't need to really look at it so force visibility and all this other stuff whatever this does i don't know 2x worked pretty good and didn't really sacrifice frames and so i got that 2x and trains flat and cockpit elimination of course raindrops gotta have raindrops so that is the basic graphic settings that i use now let's go ahead and exit out of here because i'm going to open that up in vr in a little bit oculus settings 80 hertz all right get out of the way <laughs> oculus settings 80 hertz and i got it jacked all the way up to 1.6 x while that work works good for my system uh, so you may need to play around with your 72 uh, 90 there's no benefits 120 that i saw 90 hertz i could get it up to about 1.1 before i started getting some shimmering and some stuttering so 80 hertz 1.6 works for me your system may be a little bit different now the vr side of it first thing you need to do of course once you set this up i'm not going to go into all of you how to set how to set this up but the one thing that you need to do to get our toolkit to work it's our toolkit to work and on the quest 2 go to app settings doesn't make sense but you need to click steam vr client that open composite is going to take this steam vr client and it's going to switch it back over to the open xr don't ask me why don't ask me how it just does <laughs> like joe joe so i had a little technical difficulties for whatever reason i could not get the open xr toolkit to show up on either mirroring it or doing the oculus casting so i'm unable to show you my settings but i can still walk you through it this picture i downloaded off of a google image it's basically uh what we're looking at and i'm going to leave a link to a video that really describes how to use open xr toolkit pretty well uh so in just the overlay that is just going to be your F fps uh what, what fps you're running currently uh mine is pretty much what well, mine is stuck at 40 i believe that's 40 per eye because it runs fairly smooth it doesn't no stuttering so but whatever 90 fps or whatever all that stuff but it, it reads mine 40 so upscaling i'm using the fsr which is uh amd and they say if you use nvidia you can try nis but it, they say you can actually use uh either one doesn't matter but fsr works better for me uh, i'll leave the the anamorphic uh scaling turn leave that off that's so you can independently adjust the size width and height uh now the sharpness actually the size and the sharpness is what we focus with first pull the sharpness down to about 50 percent take the or pull the size down to 50 percent pull the sharpness down to about two percent and then what you want to do is start bumping up the size in increments of about five percent get in the system or get in vr like your quest 2 play dcs run around a couple maps or so uh in some traffic areas see how it flies 
if it flies i say 40 fps or whatever is not getting a bunch of frame drops uh back out come back in jump that up another five percent you can continue increasing five percent increments until you start getting some fps drops or some uh, uh shuttering or something like that and then back it down accordingly then that's when you start going into your sharpness that's why you you have all your aliases and stuff turned off because your sharpness is going to take care of a lot of that those the wing edge edges and the sh ghosting and stuff like that as you jump this up now is mine i believe i have my size set to 75 percent and my sharpness is around 60 percent i believe give or take I may have to adjust that when I go into some more busier uh, missions, some multiplayers and stuff like that. Uh, but for the most part, those are the only two things that I mess with on this uh, first menu. And then over on this other menu side, of course, you get your appearances and stuff like that. Your field of view, your world scale. That's where I showed earlier. Mine was like 70, 70% 70 or something like that, 75%. Uh, adjusted it right there. And it, I didn't, as far as, uh, fov i didn't see any different as far as what i can see side to side but when i turned my head it wasn't as shaky it was more stable so and like i said it helped with the uh, frames so but for the most part that is all i mess with on open X, on open xr toolkit more importantly it actually opened up and we can actually start playing with some settings and that's uh one last thing we'll jump into uh dcs i'll show you uh some uh flight real quick but not really necessary because you're not going to see true oculus you're going to see uh uh the computer image rendering but it's flyable so hopefully this video helps and i will i will see you guys on about you guys on about